And once again, back up in this thing, baby. A ah, little sip. A little sip. Taking a little sip of that Angry Orchard today. I'm actually about to knock out after I do this article. I'm trying to uh, reacclimate myself to, you know, functioning in the daytime. But uh, I hope everybody had a great day. I hope uh, everybody's comfortable because I want to talk to you about something a little on the serious side tonight. Now, uh, you know, I try, you know, with everything that's going on to maintain a, a positive outlook, right? Because... Nothing good comes from just uh, dwelling on a uh, negative psyche. Which, by the way, excuse me, where are my manners? Welcome, everybody, to uh, your planet, my planet, our planet, but mostly my planet. But definitely, definitely not whose planet? Antifa's planet. Planet Hog coming back at you again, ladies and gentlemen. So, <clears throat> excuse me. See, I try to maintain a positive kind of outlook on things, or at least a, a net neutral, right? I'm not one of those people who just walks around with a goofy-ass smile plastered to my face at all times. However, you know, if you're one of those people, you know, more power to you, but it just doesn't work for me. Um, anyway... So I try to I try to keep that, but you know, the more I engage with people, the more I kind of see. Not necessarily I see the writing on the wall because I think the writing's been on the wall for a while, as far as the nation goes. But the more hopeless I become about the outcome. Um, so today. For whatever reason, I went back on Twitter today, and I've actually taken a little bit of a hiatus from it, um, just because I need to do that from time to time, because it just, you know, part of the reason I think why why the environment is so charged right now is because of, as crazy as this will sound, is because of social media, namely Twitter, because I'm convinced Twitter is not made for conversations, it's not. It's literally not made to have a cogent understanding of uh, the points presented by someone, unless you know they have a masterful command of the English language, and they can kind of express themselves adequately within the character uh, restrictions. But for most people, that's just not possible. So you get part of what they think, and it's usually because of Twitter, and obviously they know they have a limited amount of characters, so it's usually the most, um, you're, you're getting the tip of the spear, like you're getting the broad part of the sword, you're getting the part of their argument that is typically the most inflammatory, without any kind of peripheral context that kind of gives you, you know, a, a better understanding of who you're dealing with, in my opinion. Anyhow... Uh, I was I was on Twitter today and I saw whoever Joe Biden's nanny is who tweets on under his account tweeted, you know, that same thing about peace and we need to come together and move forward. And man, I can't tell you how aggravated that makes me um, and aggravated from a stance that, you know, it's so it's so fake it's so transparent to people who kind of know what's going on, right? It's it's completely see-through. It's completely sanctimonious. It's completely disingenuous. Um, because, again, uh, part of that tweet was, oh, you know, we got to move on from the divisive rhetoric that's dividing us and making us hate each other. But where is that all coming from? And again, I might be preaching to the choir here, but... It bears repeating. Where is all that coming from? The only reason this country is not in full-scale armed conflict is because conservatives are doing what conservatives do, and that's play by the rules and 
Live and let live. I am increasingly of the opinion that our rift is so insufferable and it's so uh, insurmountable that, you know, it's kind of like when you get injured, which I did, I slammed the, uh, the heat shield, the flame deflector on my, uh, grill. I slammed it on my damn finger last night. It pinched the inside of my ring finger. So I had a nice little fluid sack sitting there and it was quite painful actually. So I did what I typically do with things like that, that are painful. I immediately immersed myself in it. So I pressed it really hard and then I got a push pin and just kind of punctured the skin and let the blood out and now it's healing. It's fine. And that's kind of how I feel about society. I think we need to just fast forward, stop the posturing, and get whatever it is that needs to happen, get it over with. Um, I was, and again, uh, well, not again, because I haven't told you this, but people who know me would tell you, I'm not opposed to the idea of fighting in terms of, uh, number one, again, the idea of it. And number two, the purpose that it serves, because as, uh, you know, as high as we like to consider ourselves and the regard that we, uh, the afflatus that we, I think afflatus is the right word, afflatus that we kind of hold for ourselves. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to fact check myself in real time here. Hold on a second. Because I want to make sure that is the right word. I can spell it. Oh, look at that. Um, do, 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 do. A divine creative impulse or inspiration. Okay, so kind of, but not really what I was looking for there. Uh, well, anyway. There's a word for you. But... Let me go a different route. Okay, so the way we kind of conceptualize ourselves and the regard that we have for ourselves in terms of our evolution as creatures on this planet, understanding that we have learned to live civilly with each other. Well, there's still a part of us that is always going to be primal. And I think part of being an adult, part of being a mature human being is learning how to uh, keep that part of you in tow, is learning how to control that. So, with that understanding comes the understanding that you never permanently really get rid of it. And I don't think you should want to, either. Now, there are some people who, you know, that, that's that's... They're trying to evolve as a human being to the point where aggression and things like that are just, they see those as baser instincts. I don't. I see them as uh, rudimentary. I see them as extremely simple uh, instincts and therefore, and also governed by emotion, which most of the simple instincts are governed by emotion, in my opinion. Because emotion is very, uh, it's it's very immaterial. It's very non-complex. It's especially when you uh, juxtapose it to something like logic and reasoning. Anyway, all of that being said, I think there's a place for our primal nature. It may not be in our everyday lives. In fact, I would discourage someone from living in their primal nature in their everyday life. But there is a part of you that when all of that fails, it it's kind of like a, I'm trying to conceptualize this the right way. It's kind of, it's almost, it, it just reminds you of who you really are, right? Because when it all goes down, all right, for an example, if, you know, you're out one night with a couple of friends and you guys are walking to the car and the night and some guy walks up on you and you know, pulls a knife on you. You're going to have a reaction to that in that moment. And it may not be 
uh, a, a reaction that everyone can perceive if you're good at controlling yourself and subduing your emotions. But you will have like a, a person producing that knife that's a stimulus and that will cause some kind of a reaction out of you. And that reaction it boils down to obviously fight or flight. And I think that's your primal nature and it tells you a lot about yourself. Well, okay, I said all that. I kind of digressed. But today's episode and why you see that icon down there on the uh, thumbnail. Number one, because it's a badass game. And to people who were born in the 80s, all the 80s babies, that, that right there, that was a rite of passage, that thing you're staring at. But the word contra actually is a word. It's a Latin word, and it means against. So I thought it was apropos to kind of describe the current atmosphere that another C word finds themselves in, right? So the first C word was contra. Really, the second C word is contra. The first one is conservative. So if you're conservative, you find yourself in a position of... Um, the two characters of Contra. Now, I'm not advocating you to get a spreader and go out and just mow people down because, who are we kidding? Uh, the laser and the machine gun were the two best guns of the game. The spreader was just a cheat. I mean, I, I went out of my way to not get the spreader, but it was just me. Anyway, unless you're playing one player, right? I'm digressing into Contra, obviously, for all the people who can appreciate this, but if you're playing one player, spreader's fine. Two players, spreader... You know, that was that was the original game hack, I think. Anyway, so I, I can't help but think we find ourselves in this position, especially when you see some of the things that have been happening in the news, right? So, excuse me, not, to, not even going to mention the fact that we have a serious problem with what happened with the election. And what's alarming to me is a lot of people who are just kind of like, oh, whatever, let, you know, Trump should just kind of concede so we can be done with this and move forward. And it's like, well, somehow, somehow you managed to miss the titanic point of all of this. The titanic gargantuan point, which is um, there's a lot of, let me be careful how I say this, there's a lot of reason to believe that shenanigans took place in the election that do not reflect the will of the American people as a whole. And that's a big deal. And the fact that people are just so willing to just kind of turn the page is, uh, it vexes me. It, it, it vexes me because if you really are that apathetic and indifferent to uh, the def the defrauding of one of the most important functions that we do as citizens. Uh, number one, I don't know what to say to you, and number two, I don't know, I don't understand how you think that this society can move forward when we don't have control of our leaders, when the accretion of all of these offenses, one hundred percent coming from the Democrats, by the way, that ultimately end up eroding the rights of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I don't understand how people can just kind of shirk at that and just kind of move on. But that aside, we're dealing with a quote-unquote pandemic, a pandemonium for a disease that is literally nowhere near as bad as they make it out to be. Literally nowhere near as bad. Um, just about every other disease has a higher mortality rate at this point. Just about. This is a disease that most of us, if we have it, we will be just fine. But somehow we're still being forced to act like this is the most important thing in the world right now, right? And you have places like New Newark, New Jersey, where... Uh, you have you had the whoever's in charge there say that all the citizens need to stay in their homes. So now you're being locked in your homes. China would be proud, right? The only thing that's missing is the welding of the door. So you have literal citizens of the United States of America being told they can't leave their houses. At the same time, you see protests, you see unmasked riots, all this other horse shit, right? 
all right, that aside, I really don't want to get into that right now. I just want to get into just the brass tacks of what we are facing, us on the Contra side. So you're being told to wear masks. Again, and I'll go back to the reference I made to my brother Sam is Dead from a few episodes back where he just had the, the kid, I forget his name at this point, carry the letters and one of the letters was you know just kind of a spy correspondence that was meant to be kept clandestine because one of the characters was kind of conspiring against the americans or the colonialists and they were basically testing the courier to see if he could be trusted so that they could use him to further whatever their uh, agenda was and that i can't help but feel that same feeling when I see people walking around with masks, when you see people driving their car by themselves wearing a mask, when you see people out jogging a trail by themselves wearing a mask, when you see how the alarming amount of Americans that are just okay with being dictated to, you have to stay inside, but your governor is going to go out for the second time And uh, dine at this fancy French restaurant that most of you can't afford because you lost your jobs because he shut the economy down because of this disease. It's not really a pandemic. (sighs) And you just go along with it. Or or, Or another governor who's out partying and protesting with no mask. Right? But don't you dare do it. I... I it's 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 very disheartening to me the number of Americans that are just cowards at this point that just don't want trouble so they'll just give in and honestly that's on both sides primarily on the left but it, it is certainly on both sides you have both sides of the coin that do this and to the point now where you have on the, again going back to the Contras. Well, now you had the, I believe she's the governor of Oregon, who just basically said, yeah, um, you know, after they told us we can't have Thanksgiving, after they see, because it, it went from 15 days to, to just, to, to, uh, what was, what was the fucking phrase they actually used to bend the curve, right? To, to flatten the curve. It went from that to, there's a lot of states that still haven't opened up yet. To now, they're so comfortable telling you what to do that you have a governor in Pennsylvania that is mandating that people wear masks in their home and you have other governors who are telling you you can't have Thanksgiving dinner with your family. You can't have Christmas with your family. And that's what I've been saying, that the more you give in, the more they will take. And I think the problem with a lot of people is they just want to kind of get along with their lives and not rock the boat. And not have to do anything. But uh, that's increasingly not becoming an option. Because there's something nefarious that is going on in our country right now. And for those of you who have crossed over, right? For those of you who have been what they call red-pilled. For those of you who see it for what it is. We have an obligation. We can't... We can't bury our heads in the sand because right now we are the only resistance to this. You know, it's funny to me that you'd hear the other side call themselves the resistance. The leftists call themselves the resistance. Uh, You're being sponsored by one of the most wealthy, two of the most wealthy billionaires on the planet. You have all of the mainstream media covering for you. And you have politicians subsidizing your riots while at the same time telling police to not charge you. So how, again, are you? You have the entire weight of the machine at your back. How are you the resistance? But for the rest of us, you know, we can't. um, We can't give it. And that's fine. You know, there's a lot of people who live their lives and end up wishing for more exciting times. They just live a pretty normal, pretty basic life. And I think we all did to a certain point. I mean, sure, we had 9-11, we had the Great Recession. But I don't. I think both of them kind of pale in comparison to what whatever, 
you know, whatever chapter we find ourselves in now in American history. <clears throat> and, you know, for those of us who kind of see, see it for what it is, it really is like the Matrix. I, I hate to keep making the same reference, the same uh, analogy, but we really are, you know, it really is the Matrix. And the thing that's kind of crazy about it is, obviously, we would be the ones who are unplugged. The mainstream media being the machines, but everybody you come in contact with being, guess who? Regular people. Because people forget when you watch The Matrix, the real, yes, yeah, Smith was uh, a dangerous adversary, but the real danger was being around normal people. If you remember The, the Matrix, because at any point, the machine could take over the body of any person. So if you were in a crowd, you were in a very dangerous place. How is that different from right now? So all of that being said, you know, I just think people need to, all of us who are unplugged, you need to prepare yourself mentally, man. You need to prepare yourself for whatever comes next. And Honestly, I'm at the point now where it's like a Band-Aid. It's like, all right, let's just get whatever this is over with and so we can move on. Um, and I'm not advocating outright violence. I'm not advocating outright violence. I would love to think that we could rationalize our points, but I just I think we're past that point. And as I watch this onslaught... You know, it's funny, they say that we're the fascists, uh, that we're the racists, that we're all these things, but they're the ones who are steadily impeding and encroaching on our day-to-day lives. For example, uh, the parlor situation, where you had uh, parlor as a social media app that a lot of conservatives use because they won't get censored for being conservative. Right? They won't be con- they won't be censored because if you go on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And you post anything that is uh, contradictory towards the Democratic Party agenda, you run a substantial risk of being deplatformed. For example, I shared some information on my Instagram about uh, some irregularities that took place on the night of the election. And my account was I was locked out of my account for several hours. And they posted a notification that said I was suicidal. So. You know, a lot of conservatives have moved to Parler because Parler allows you to speak your political opinion. Um, it's not a I mean, obviously, actually, Parler, what's what's crazy about this? Because you you have these stories from the media that are like, oh, you know, Parler, it supports racism and white supremacy and racist dogma. You know, they, they, they go to their bag of phrases and just throw out one of the usual phrases. And it just annoys me how much this works. Anything they want you to hate, they just call it racist and people just go along with it. Or any group of people they don't want you to like. They call them Nazis. I am obviously not a Nazi. But I did support Donald Trump. And I do support Donald Trump. So figure it out. And there was a time where liberals could be trusted to have those two sets of facts. To have a media telling them that anybody that supports Donald Trump is a Nazi. And then to look at me and know me because they are my friend and have been my friend for decades. And be like, okay, well the media is obviously wrong on this one. But it seems like we've lost that ability somewhere. So, you got this uh, site, Parlor, that is actually more uh, astringent in terms of being on top of hate speech. You can't just go on there and say racist shit. Number one, everybody who's on there will kind of decry your position. But number two, there are there is like a community safeguard regulation there. It's just, it's more populous than what goes on at Twitter. But they want people to hate it, so they're saying it's it's the network for racists, right? And maybe I said this in the social media episode. I think I did. I hope I did. This is kind of how I felt about Parler all along. People are like, oh, we can just go to Parler. No, you are missing. Okay, you're not seeing the bigger move. It's one of the things I love about chess is you move a lot of pieces around, but 
you know, and it's kind of platitudinous to say, you know, you got to play three moves ahead. No, you don't need to play three moves ahead. Okay. I'm, I'm a big proponent of, I play my opponent. And one of the ways you can jam yourself up is if you just play three moves ahead. If you say, okay, I know I'm going to do this, this, and this, and you don't take into account how your opponent is moving, you will probably lose that game, that match. So one of the things I do love about it, though, is it really is a cerebral game because a lot of people pay attention to the pieces that are moving and not necessarily the pieces that have been activated by the moving piece itself, right? People will see a pawn move, but they won't necessarily look at the the uh, bishop. They won't look at the entire row and we'll see what piece it's threatening. They won't look at what the queen just was able to uh, threaten. And that's kind of how I feel about people's thinking. You know, when people said, oh, you can just go to parlor. That's focusing on the pawn. What? Why? A- ask yourself the question, why do we have to go to parlor in the first place? Because they're censoring us. Because they don't want us to speak. Okay, so what makes you think they'll stop when you go to parlor? And that's what's happening now, where you have the media coming, railing against Parler, and they're going to call it racist, and they're going to try to get it to platform, or they're going to try to get the person who owns it to bend the knee and acquiesce to their demands, and then it'll just become Twitter light. It's... It is a dark time that we, that we are living in. But I don't want you to be defeatist. I'm not defeatist. I'm actually, I think I'm in some kind of a, uh, some kind of a pre-conflict Zen right now where I'm just kind of chilling, but I'm, I'm just waiting because as far as I'm concerned, I saw a few months ago that I don't know how we move past the inevitability of open violence. And it's a shame. It really is a shame. But, you know, the there's a saying that says, you know, the conservatives think liberals are misguided, but liberals think conservatives are evil. And those are two very unbalanced things. That's not a that's not an equal transaction of preconceived notion. Right. If I think you're wrong, then I'll just simply try to correct your thinking. But if you think I'm evil then you may just want to be rid of me. And I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know how you coexist with that. I I think at this point we are way, we are completely different people. We are completely different people. And it's not just here. Right. You see overseas, you see protests in France because France had a huge like their lockdown was you can't go outside without papers. Uh, You see it in Italy. You see it all over the, the world. But the thing about it is the American conservative, we are the spirit of individual liberty right now, because all of those other countries, they don't have a First Amendment. As a matter of fact, to the best of my knowledge, we're the only country. That allows free speech. Could be wrong. If I'm wrong, fact check me shit. But I'm pretty sure we are the only country where that is your right. And as such, I think we have something of an obligation to the rest of the world. So I guess maybe I'm talking to the people that wanted to bury their heads in the sand. The people who voted for Donald Trump but don't want anybody to know about it. The people who just kind of, who will say, you know, Black Lives Matter and yeah, this is terrible just to get along. That comes at a price. And to me, that is just as inane as taking out a loan to pay off another loan. That is just as inane um, as, you know, like I said, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Because you're actually perpetuating the problem. And the problem is the fact that you're not willing to stand on your square and say, no, this is how I feel. Now, we can have a discussion about it. 
like adults or not, but I'm not going to let you force me to comply with what you want me to do and want me to be. It's crazy to me that the generation of Stone Cold Steve Austin, D-Generation X, Family Guy, are a bunch of pussies. Literally the generation of fucking Kid Rock, of Eminem, the generation that celebrated rebellion are the main ones just falling in line or burying their heads in the sand because they just don't want any conflict. And again, I get I get people saying, well, you know, I have a job, you know, I have a good standing with this company and this, this and that. And I worked really hard for my career or my family comes first. Any one of those excuses. You giving in is just buying time. It's very short sighted. It doesn't fix the problem. If anything, it's going to make it worse. Again, it is just as inane as a person who has to pay back a student loan, but they keep enrolling in classes so they never have to pay it. Okay, yeah, you can postpone today. You can sell today for tomorrow, but I don't know how wise that is. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's all I got for you today. Um, I will include some of the links to some of the things that I referenced, actually everything that I referenced, down in the description box, uh, you know, for those of us who are unplugged, man, we just got to, we have to own this. We can't, there's no pussyfooting around this. We are literally the resistance. You have political representatives, AOC, uh, some dude, uh, Robert Reich or whatever his name is, calling for re-education camps, essentially. For people who are conservative. You have colleges and universities that will not only over talk you, not give you a, a, a space to speak and exercise your rights, but they'll fail you outright. They'll castigate you. They'll denigrate you. You have jobs now that are pushing policies that fly directly in the face of what you believe and have literally nothing to do with your job. What's being pushed right now is the extermination of any kind of methodology, any kind of thought process that is not perfectly aligned with leftism, neoliberalism, that isn't perfectly aligned with intersectionality, that isn't perfectly aligned with Black Lives Matter dogma, that isn't perfectly aligned with critical race theory. We are facing an intellectual genocide right now an intellectual genocide a political genocide and once they've executed those successfully there's only one thing left and it's pretty much already done already and that'll be the physical genocide so you know for those of us who are standing outside of the, all of this looking in understand that It's on us. It is 100% on us. And look, I'm not telling you to paint your face blue, don a kilt, and go out there and, you know, hold the line. I'm not saying that. But I am saying, don't be a coward. Don't, don't be afraid to express how you view things. Because that's why we are where we are. That's how we've gotten to this point. That's how we've gotten to this. That's how we got to this point. Excuse me. That's how we got to this point where we find ourselves. Because people are afraid to challenge other people, the dominant dogma, which is neoliberalism. Anyway, I'm going to hop off now. I uh, appreciate everybody for listening. I really do, man. I really appreciate you guys listening. Um, and... I will, man, I'm feeling it now. I'm ready for bed. I am absolutely ready for bed. This damn Zequil is kicking in. This angry orchard is doing the trick as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am going to head on out. I will catch you all tomorrow. So until then, peace.